pretty strict about not working um, like after five and over the weekends. I'm, I'm self, I, I'm like self employed, so I have to. Kinda, oh yeah, like, yeah. I, be well, about the kind of thing. yeah. I have not learned that discipline. Like I should make it pretty clear that like I'm not necessarily bragging because it's kind of a sad state of affairs. Um, yeah, dude. Like I, I'm pretty good on the time limits, but as for like days, dude. Like I don't know. Like I'm thinking about making tomorrow the first actual day off I've taken in. Like, I, I don't know, man. Three weeks? Since maybe? the dawn of time. Yeah, well, yeah. It's just, it's just, honestly, like, I'm not trying to make myself sound like a badass, but it's just like a sad state of affairs that whether I'm writing about rap music, depending, it, the only difference is my mindset for whether it feels like work or not, you know? Oh, totally. So, so that's why it's like, I might think that I'm doing something fun, and then I'll get up from it, and I'll be like... Fuck you, Martin. Fuck, fuck, fuck you. you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that's tricky, man. When, yeah. when your craft can look a lot like work. Exactly. It's like, yeah. It's just like like you know. Thursday was like I made music and I just got up from it for for like five hours and I came away from it and I was like, you know, I was just like fucking stressed out. I drank too much coffee. I felt like I didn't sleep the night before. <laughs> so it's just like a whole bunch of shit like that, man. So if you have any tips at all on the work life balance of Reuben Smith, I would um. <laughs> You know, draw up a, make it a quick elevator pitch and write yet another do it do, uh, self help book. Uh, that would that, that would like actually be helpful to me though. Um, yeah, that's chill though. I yeah. So I'm um, wait. So what is oh. Slack? Because a whole Slack. lot of super cool people seem to know what it is, but I am not one of those people. No, that's cool. So Slack's just um Slack's like a basic communication platform yeah. um, for like. It's a basically text messaging, and, and it's generally used for work, and I use it for, like, all my projects. And okay. the nice thing about it, as opposed to Skype, is that um, it kind of keeps all the information, like, well-contained, and you can have, like, different channels going. Yeah. So, like, it's like, if you remember forums from, like, back in the day, it's like that, but in, like, real time with chat format, and you can upload files and photos, and yeah. um, you can do some calls through it. It's, you know, it's useful, and it's, it's not, like, you know, it's not life-changing. I'm... I'm yeah. a big fan, but I just figured I'd check in about it. Okay, is, is that is that the thing they keep saying is going to be um, what, like, ends email? Yeah, it's the thing that would end email. I mean, honestly, it kind of did for me. Like, I'm... Really? Wow. I'm, I'm, better, I'm blessed in the way that it's like I kind of... I get to structure the organizations I work with a lot oh, of times. Oh, so really? I'm like, that look, nice. you will only talk to me through Slack. Really? And I have, you know, I have zero inbox all the time. Really? Damn. Yeah. Zero inbox? <laughs> Yo, I saw... Do it here. Fucking... Let me send you, you and I'm, don't worry, I'm not counting this towards your hour or anything. I don't care, dude. I'll, I'll pay just to hang out with you. Okay, cool, cool. Actually, that actually, I did just start a, um, I'm starting a subscription service you might want to sign up for then, because one of the, it's like a all, continuously ongoing Kickstarter, so you pay every month, and it's like only like $250 or 5 or 10 but one of the Is things... Is it like Patreon? Um, no, it's through Double Bounce, because this guy yeah. told me he would give me money to be on his site and not Patreon. Um, nice, cool. Yeah, yeah, and so I got some uh, $500 of marketing money out of it, but he, um, one of the things is a monthly Skype hangout session with me, so there you go. Oh, but, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> You're going to be a busy man. Yeah, yo, 3,516 unread emails, man. That's, Holy shit. Because you know what people do here? I mean, you, you might as well find this out now because it will be important to you later, but <laughs> when, when or if you try to get important, or not important, popular in rap, um, is there's this whole fucking shadow industry of, let's call them publicists, with quotes, um, who, what they do is they go to every goddamn, uh, music, even, like, stuff that's not music, uh, websites, and they crawl, I really hope they don't make some sad sack of shit do this by hand, and get writers' email addresses from the pages by hand, because I'm sure a bot could do it just as well, you know? Like a search engine totally. fighter or whatever. But they Gotta can, hope that that's smart, at least. Yeah, yeah, please, dude. And if you're not, then, like, fire everyone in your tech department. They probably don't even... <laughs> fire they, all of them. Yeah, they probably don't even have tech departments, dude. It's just some girl with a computer, man. So I'll tell you, yo, this girl, Lindsay Williams, of those 3,500 emails, this girl, Lindsay, has to be, like, two fucking thousand of them. Cause what you here? Look, look, look. Will this be a dude? This is this is since, and this is only going back to here. Check this. This is only going this back. This is last to, week. Yeah, yeah. Like, um. So what they do is, and then they just send out blast emails, and sad sack rappers, I guess, pay these newsletters, these publicists, 
to blast out their shitty songs to, oh, a, to a thousand writers at a time. And just like, dude, no one is looking at those, man. I did, just no one is looking at them. She's wasting her time. Well, she just wants to make money. She's not actually trying to get people popular. Holy shit. But like the rappers, dude, it's a waste of time, dude. So I'm sure at some point you will start getting emails hitting you up about like publicity campaigns. Like, God, today's deals. Don't tell me about that shit. Don't tell me about Sword Media with an E and three R's. Like, I don't. Oh, my God. So that's why I'm almost like, I don't think it'll happen. But even, you know, because, like, what? The tech community always thinks they're going to change the world, and Peter Tile and his floating robot island countries or whatever. But the, um... <laughs> isn't that a thing of his? Is that how you say it? Tile? Teal? T-H-I-E-L? I don't know who the fuck... I don't know who that is. Oh, he's the guy who started PayPal and who, um... He funded a whole... Oh, Elon Musk. It's Elon Musk. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, but what they call him the PayPal Mafia. Because uh, they're yeah, all dudes... guys, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, they're all dudes who got rich off it. But Peter Tile is the guy who, um... He supports Trump, and he, um... He bankrolled... <laughs> he, 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 he bankrolled Hulk Hogan's, uh... Suit against Gawker. Because Gawker outed oh, Peter Tile as being yeah. gay. Yeah, yeah. So th that's this guy, and I swear he had some idea to start new countries in the Pacific Island... That were like robots. So it's this dude. Um, but he, um, yeah, yeah, it, it closely associates him with Elon Musk. But dude, like, okay, okay, so like, yeah, of course he thinks he's gonna be like, he's gonna change the world, and he probably will. But also, like, the New York Times, they had an article after all this fucking Hillary Clinton email stuff that was like, Hillary Clinton's uh, problems show why email should just not be a thing. And Fuck like, yes. And after the fucking, did you see, um, uh, it doesn't even matter who you support at this point, I feel like. But, like, the FBI found oh, yeah. more emails last night. Yeah, think... yeah, I saw this. So, if that is what Slack will prevent for us, then, like, dude, I'll fucking close Gmail today, man. Because that's, that's <laughs> just, like, oh, my God. It, it's becoming, like, fucking people masturbating about it. Um, yeah, yeah, no, so... That's cool, though. Yeah, so, it, well, if you're not sold on it, then, honestly, like, um, Skype is fine with me. I'm just going... Oh, no, I'll, I'll get you on Slack. I just don't want to waste your time. Like, I, I could show you, dude. I, I run, like, I run three orgs on it right now. I'm part of a couple startup communities. Actually, I could talk to you about it, because we could probably we could probably bring something cool to the hip-hop community. Actually, no, I'm sorry. There already is one. Fuck me. Oh, um, I, haven't, I haven't gotten onto it yet, but there's, from, from Reddit, there's the hip-hop heads... Yeah, and they have a whole Slack community with like five thousand people on it, right okay. there. So it's like it's a closed loop community where I think you know you maybe for that one I think they might charge you a little bit to get in or something. I really because that's oh. a specific community. Yeah. Oh, oh that's kind of cool. Yeah, because because this one guy kept telling me I should um uh start not Slack or is it Slack? What's IRC? What's IRC, yo? Or, or, I'm not so. Uh, I think they're really close. They're real close. I, I see. Oh, because he was telling me we should... St oh, no, that's what he was saying. We should start a Slack community, and I should, like, pay people for the subscription to it. And I was like, I don't know if I'm that big yet, man. But, um... You can, you can work, yeah. yeah. I actually, I'm working with the guys right now who, um... I'm working with a company right now called Slack Pass. There's some buddies of mine now, and you can charge per channel. So yeah. you can have, like, different little th conversations going on, and people can be like, oh, cool, yeah, that's, like, the channel. They talk about, like, you get tips for this specific thing, and it's, like, a yeah. you know, dollar or two or whatever it is for that one. Oh, 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 that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, okay, well, then I might I might even fold that into the double-bound subscription thing I was just talking about. But, yeah, that like, that subscription thing is going to fund a whole new website and shit like that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's sweet, though. I'm just going over your Google Drive thing now. Um, okay. Yeah, so you based it – what was I going to say? Oh, the reason I brought this. There he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our man. No, because there's a great section in here, um, and the book is like $35. Um, but I can just copy it to you, scan, scan it for you, or, or do it really fucking ad hoc and just um, take pictures of the paper, which might be... Oh, I like homework. Should I, go, should I go read something? Do I get to read a book? What do I got? You, yeah, oh, yeah. Scott Parker's introduction. Um, but no, the... Um, what would really be perfect is, yeah, his intro chapter is all about his persona. So, so obviously, like, all the research you did is great because it's about persona. But what this would make the connection, this would help make the connection because um, it's persona in rap. So it's right. like, it's got lines like, and I, I underline this one, so it must be important. 
It says... <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> there the you steps, go. That's a, just one step down from highlighting. Yeah, oh, I, I was literally just about to say, where is the highlighter? But it says, by tradition, <laughs> a rapper's persona hues closely or succeeds best when it does to his autobiography. So, like, stuff like that. And it's all cool. And it talks about how well delineated his, um, his different personas are. And I had that one line that where he explained who is who. Um, like, he's like... Damn. I can't find it now. No, but he explains real succinctly who, who, which song is which. And he's like, Slim Shady, the epitome of Slim Shady is on song X. The epitome of Marshall Mathers is on song Y. And the epitome of Eminem is on song Z, you know. And it's just a really good, oh no, that's in the anthology of rap. Fuck. I think that's at home though. I don't have that. Um, but you can find it again, and I might even have sent that video to you before. Cause I yeah, think yeah, I, I yeah. checked those videos out. He yeah. talked about it. He went into it a little bit. He didn't go. He didn't go super deep on it. He kind of just pointed out the concept a bit. Oh, uh, did he name the songs or no? I don't recall him naming songs okay. per se in that one. No, I don't think so. I probably would have dug into them a little bit more. I mean, I went over. I like I said, I put your playlist on repeat. That was, yeah. some, that was some good stuff. Yeah, you know, was that good? Stuff is super dope. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, 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 because that's what I wanted it to do. So you know what I'll do again? I'll make a, um, here, I'm just taking notes. I'll make another playlist for you, because some other good ones are, um, I mean, you know, so much of rap in rap is persona. So even just being able to define rappers in like four or five really good adjectives with their persona is really helpful, not just in understanding rap, but in understanding how to structure your own personas. And obviously, like you, you'll have multiple personas. So if you, like, that's a good bit of homework, too. So, like, I'm just going to make a note here just to remind me to do it. Um, send second persona playlist to, um, this is for you, Ruben, create four or five good adjective phrase to describe each persona because like i can do that with like real rappers right like kanye west is like defined like and i asked you to um did you answer any of those questions that i put at the end of the last oh. email okay yeah yeah good like the origin story you know like kanye west's origin story is the car crash his superpower is being able to make awesome beats like the reason he does it is because he's generally pissed off that the, he wasn't born thinking with everyone in the world thinking that he was the greatest rapper ever. Like, Kanye West just has a continual chip on his shoulder, which is why... <laughs> it, like, it's true, though. I was like, born. They didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, Jay-Z... Jay-Z is not insecure. So eventually, at a certain point, he was going to stop making good music. And he did. And that album is called Magna Carta Holy Grail. Kanye West is, for all of his bluster, is one of the most incredibly insecure people I've ever met. He named his goddamn son Saint West. Dude, like, that little kid is going to have so many daddy issues growing up. Like, so he just, and that's like his, that's why he does it, you know? Why does Peter Parker become Spider-Man? I don't know, to win Mary Jane's hand or whatever it is. Um, but, like, again, th these comparisons to comic book characters, I think, can go a long way towards defining these characters in, in useful sure. ways, you know? For because. Sure. Because I really like that you already started coming up with some lines because that was my thing. You know, we always got to keep it... Where's the drive? Uh, we always got to keep it pointed in the direction of making this a rap album, right? Totally. So, so do you... Okay. So, Legion... Legion... Uh, okay, yeah. So, do you want to break this questions from Martin? Nice. Okay, you did that. Nice. Um, yeah, I put it at the top there. And, like, you know, I got... I, honestly, like I said in the email, like, I got... I got pretty fucking lost in a couple of them. Like, I, yeah, I went deep. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you want to rock... Okay, and who was the research based on? What was that book again? Oh, dude. <laughs> so, okay, let me, yeah. let me just break it down for you. So, basically, the I was I looked into the apostles a lot, and I was like, cool, like, what can you do with this? And I like, looked into what it meant to be an apostle, which is cool, because it meant, yeah. like, it's like he who is sent away and, like, all this this shit. Yeah. And I was kind of like, that, man, wait, this is that's pretty what convoluted. Apostle means? That's what, what that? That's what apostle means? It's, let me see, it's in my, it's in my notes way down there at the bottom. Um, okay. Like, the definition of apostle is fucking something funny, like, where'd it go? Uh, one, one I just, I archived away. it. No, yeah, I'm looking one at it. One sent on a mission, one who is sent away, which I thought was really interesting, you know? That like, is okay, so cool. interesting. I was going to say that, too, because it occurs to me that, like, an apostle is someone who comes, not someone who's sent away. 
Uh, you know, it's, it depends <laughs> okay. on what, you, what well, you're looking at say, there. I mean, you're teaching, um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's just you're teaching me so, stuff I didn't learn in 18 years of Catholic school education. So it's pretty, um... <laughs> Wikipedia, man. Yeah, it, yeah. I'll tell you all about it. It's yeah. crazy. All right, uh, but cool. So let's see. Yeah. So I started going pretty deep. Like, I, I did a couple things. One, I went really deep in um, disassociative identity disorder because you were like, you got to try and keep it uh, as, like, true to form as possible. Yeah. So I got the sense that there's generally, like, three to 12 individual personalities that's kind of like the standard thing um it comes from a lot of trauma in early childhood is a lot of like one of the theories that have to do with it um and i've got like a whole i did this whole breakdown on legion himself just as far as like his relationship to his to his disease yeah, essentially yeah, yeah. i mean it's you know okay, obviously super okay. rare i mean you know that's my that's that's more of just my notes and stuff yeah 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 um but Basically, it's, it's a super controversial disease because they don't really know if it actually exists or if it's people acting. Like, there's, a, like, a whole group of doctors that are like, nah, it's just people who are, like, yeah. extreme in their personality and, like, per and they will, like, sort of, like, push it over the edge. And so I pulled some really good quotes out of that stuff. I was really impressed, actually. Um, I, was ex I was impressed with how much, how poetic language is when you're just looking for it. Yeah. You know, like, um, one of the first ones that I saw and I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. It was like, uh treatment is talk therapy. Like, I was like, that's, it's just like that, that simple little nugget. I'm like, that's really an interesting sort of concept to like, kind of like wind around a couple of times. There's some yeah. other weird shit that were like, um, like the, oh, hang on. So I, I would actually go back into my notes and pull out the specific mm -hmm. ones. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at them now. Like, you know, like lines like disease of hiddenness. I was like, fuck, that's great. Yeah. Like, um, that is good. Uh, uh, let's see. The main problem is not a multitude of personalities, but rather a lack of a single unified identity. Oh. Like, so, like, to a certain extent, everyone has dissociative identity disorder. It's just that we... You could argue it. But, but you unite it. That's so, right. That's, I mean, so fucking, sort of, that's so fucking deep, man. I gotta right? be honest, dude. My, what would you say? My hang-up on this project, if I have one at all, isn't that people won't like this. It's that the project will become so pressured that it won't... You, like, you'll realize what you're doing is so great that you'll crumble under the pressure. Like, nah, nah, we're cool. It's cool. Th it's, that is... I, I'm sorry. No, but it's just like... It's a good thing when you have so many options available for you for which direction to go that you can't decide on it, you know? Like, that's really when you're making beautiful stuff. Um, so, okay, 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 okay. So, okay, okay. So how many, char how many characters do you have? Nine so far? Nine. Oh, this is the other one I really like. Lab tests are imaging not necessary. Like, okay. I liked just, like, like you know, because some of the concepts that I was listening to, like, a little bit of Eminem and stuff, and everyone's yeah. talking about the labs and all this stuff. And I'm like, that line... Under a different context, it's amazing. It's something completely different. Okay. Lab tests, yeah, imaging, yeah. not you, necessary. Here, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, here, three. Listen to at the drive-in album names. Do you know at the drive-in? The band. Oh. All right, because I have a feeling that yo, they wrote their album exactly this this same way. Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> but, but by pulling lines from it, not about the associative disorder, but by pulling badass lines, because yo. Sickle, sickle cells found in the seat, yo. Like because it's exactly here. Let me play you the um the context you're thinking of. Because let me just prove to you that what you're saying is exactly right. Is basically what I want to do. That these lines right, I in, love this. In, in a different context will work perfect. Uh, uh, God, how does it go? Hold on, hold on. Give me like two minutes to find this track. Pressure's on. Pressure's yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I want to get you on Slack. I think it'll work for you and your okay. students really well. I'll show you. I'll I'll set you up. I can like because you can have a different channel for each person, and it would save your entire history. And oh, you can really? like search through it really easy. So okay. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that'll be cool then. Um, yo, yeah, yeah. Th this is the here. I, I finally found it. Let me... Um, this is the here. <laughs> where am I? Where'd I go? Where'd I go?
Uh, all right. So this is. I'll play you. Let me send you the lyrics and go down to the line that says um, "banked on memory." It's it's at the start of verse two. And let me just play you this real quick. I fucking love Genius, man. I've been just. Oh, yeah. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Sputnik Sickles found in the seats. One of the most beautiful poetic images like I've ever had presented to me. And just like the way he says it, oh my god, dripping with just like layers of meaning that I can't, oh my god, dude. It, it, in a different lifetime, I'm like known for writing about post-hardcore, not rap music. Um, <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, but exactly what you said, yo. And that band, it's funny that you say clip from a journal because that band, um, they released no Mars Volta. So this guy went and that singer went and started a new band, and the album. That's Mars Volta. Yeah, Mars Volta. You know them? No, oh, yeah, they're fucking dope. I used to listen to them back like almost a decade ago. Oh yeah, yeah, but um, literally their album was made from. The album Francis the Mute was made from an album. The lyrics all came from like a journal that they found in the back of a car. Their car. Someone left a whole journal made uh, um, in the back of a car, like or a diary or something like that. And they they, they just took it and made it um, uh, into the whole album. So here, this is this is the important part of that article. And so the, the names of the people mentioned in the diary each became their own track on Francis the Mute. Um, Damn, yeah. So that's like, I'm just telling you that, like, that idea is fucking brilliant. Um, so, yeah, so now, obviously, like, I guess, and again, like, this is not how I would suggest most people start their albums or their projects or whatever. I don't know, man. I'm getting tired of albums, dog. Like, yeah, no, fuck it. Like, like, you're, like you're here just to hear my craziest ideas, right? I'm in, dude. All right, it's, all right. Like it's, don't don't make this the same an shit album. over and over again. Don't make this an album. Make it an open-ended, continuously released project. And the yeah, only of course. Thing, yeah, the only thing you have to do... I mean, what's not an album and what's not a song, though? The only, an epic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, <laughs> man. Come on. It's, actually, it's my you, definition. It's you, an epic. Yeah, so what you have to do, though, is only start... Or a saga. That's good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, like, I like epic because the epic is a genre, you know? Like, an epic is yeah. defined in certain ways. Like, an, uh, like there are technical aspects that define a piece of writing as epic. And I'm not sure, like, saga, I'm not sure if that's true for saga. Maybe it is in, like, old Norse languages or something. But, um, yo, so check this out. So, just keep releasing it. And the only point at which you release it is when you're confident that you can keep making material, you know? And then the thing will become, like, because, dude, this is what people are moving towards anyway. Like, you have to wonder, you have to ask yourself, what is an album? Because albums aren't logically defined anymore. Because totally. albums it's just based to... off how many tracks you spit onto a fucking CD or, like, a vinyl yeah, record. Yeah, but people don't buy fucking CDs anymore, man, do they? No. no. So it's like, why, do you, why are you still working with the format of an album? It just doesn't make sense. And that's why people go to mixtapes, but then it's like, well, you don't need a mixtape either. But maybe people like mixtapes because you you they feel like you can release them whenever. But like you can right right. But we want we want to take advantage of all of the good things, you know. People like albums for the promotional release, but people want their mixtapes for their freedom. Well, if you don't follow either of those formats, you can really have whatever the fuck you want, you know. 
I like how you're you're now now you're venturing into redefining the the, the actual business operations of the entire music industry. <laughs> this, this is what you asked me for, man. This is what you. No, I love it, man. It's, I, it's fucking, I, I'm, it's I'm sorry. If, if you're gonna if, pioneer, you might as well, you might as well pioneer. You know, exactly. Like you, go for it. you might as well go to the Smart. fucking end, ends of the earth. No, like no, like we're we're on the same page, man. But it's just like I'm sorry, dude. These are like the thoughts I come up with when I wake up at like two thirty, still somewhat, still a little drunk. And just thinking to myself, like, wh- why do we have albums anymore? You know, like, why? <laughs> yeah, like these are the thoughts you're appar- you apparently want to hear from me. So I'm going to give it to you. Um, Dude, honestly, that's some that's some interesting content for just lyrics in itself too. Yeah, like well, just be about abstractly, you know, just like the way in which people frame shit. Like, why do you think yeah. in the context that was given to you? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, th- so there are two things I want to do in the upcoming uh, minutes we have. The first is. And again, like I was saying before, I wouldn't suggest most people start from this, but I think you have to start with what the entire takeaway of the whole project is. Oh, YouTube channels. YouTube channels, YouTube channels. What is a Marble Slender Man? Oh, Marble Hornets. Do you ever watch... Okay, so this is another thing I've been struck by. But my girlfriend, she actually watches TV on YouTube. Like, she doesn't, like, own cable or netflix but like she uses youtube as her television channel and so i don't do you ever watch like not tv on youtube but video made for youtube channels have you ever watched anything like that no i've got youtube red okay but i never use it okay yeah so it's like this like they come out with all of these episodes and they just do it one by one but like what i'm working towards is i think I don't know, man. That'll be a little much. Even for me, that'll be a little much to turn this into a multimedia project with like video. Nah, that's not too much. You don't think you don't, you don't know what I'm capable of, dude? This is like my the whole thing that I do is it's like I'm basically have been held back concerts? from being an, art, an artistic yeah. like an artistic per, like designer essentially. All right, dude. Because, like all these things, like you got to be able to see it with an artistic eye. It's all yeah, the same shit, okay. just different mediums. Okay, well, if you can really do that, then is I would release this in the form of constant music videos on YouTube that is really what... It's really what everyone wants, right? It's really what everyone wants. On all the senses. Well, yeah, and it's like... And I mean it from, like, a business point of view. Like, when Beyoncé releases a one-hour-long visual album to accompany Lemonade, like, she doesn't really want to release a one-hour-long video visual accompaniment to Lemonade because that has, like, a limited interaction, because it's only one hour, and she only does it once a week, or once a year, or once every two years until her next album comes out, you know? Like, what she really wants is something longer than a music video, but something shorter than a visual album. Something longer than a music video, but something shorter than a TV episode. And that's, like, ten minutes. So, like, this is... Because, again, it solves all the problems of, like, well, why are music videos three minutes long and four minutes long anymore? Because we don't have to fit ads in between them anymore. You know, like, we just don't need that shit. And I think if you released it in this way, not only would its engagement be deeper, but like you were saying, like, the visual would be stronger. But anyway, I bring up the specific multimedia part of it because I think if, 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 if your research into this were not documented, that would be, like, one of the saddest things ever. That would just be, like, totally... My research into it? No, to document how hard you're working at this. I think would be really, like, if people did not know that, they would not be getting the full story. Like, if they did not know that you went on WebMD, that you read all these different books, that you're pulling lines like, uh, what is it, therapy is, no, talking is talk therapy, what was that line? Treatment is talk therapy. Treatment is talk therapy. Like, if they did not know, so maybe the multimedia doesn't, um, maybe the videos don't accompany your music, but honestly, if if I were you, I would start recording, like, You know, you have screen captures, QuickTime or whatever. I would start recording, like, all of your research, bro. Oh, I do. I put it on bookmarks and fucking make notes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm saying, like, video record you actually doing the research. Oh, shit. (laughs) Because, like, when this... Dude, I've started... Yo, I've started... Actually, that's true. Um, I record uh, all of my lessons now. Like, anytime I'm on the phone, I record it. And, like, I'm not going to publicize it. uh, Publish it. that shit. Yeah, yeah, but, like... Maybe I will one day. I don't have plans yet, but I just learned that, like, dude, I want to know everything, and I just want to review all of this shit. So, like, I think if you put these videos on YouTube to be, like, 
Dude, and I mean, that would just go so far towards building up excitement for when the music does come out, you know? If you just put even like a short five-minute grab of you going to a million different websites really quick sped up that showed all of your research, I think that would be a cool part of this. So maybe that's just an idea to think about, you know, incorporating video into this. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm curious how far incorporating video you think, because it's like, I can think of a couple things. Like, you're saying, you don't want a yeah. music video, but you want, like, a 10-minute sort of, like, mini story. I mean, like, honestly, it, it reminds me back of, like, some of the shit that, like, Michael Jackson used to do. Yeah. You know, where it's like, like, where they have, like, this fucking, you know, it's like, it's like a six-minute video with, like, three and a half minutes of music and, yeah. like, some story on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I think that could be really cool. The only problem is regularly making those. So I think if we brought... So I was going for something maybe a little more abstract, like visual expression of the music itself. But again, like I'm getting a little wary of opening all these cans of worms because yes, it would be awesome if we could have music videos to accompany all of these. But also I think like there, there were really two ideas in what I just said. One was documenting all of your research and the other was music videos to accompany your music. Um, so I right, think yeah, yeah, I got you. the first one is definitely doable, easily doable. Just when you're on the computer and researching, just record your screen. You know, you know how to do that, right? No, actually, I've never really done much of that. I've uh, done a little bit, but I don't. Oh, I do you have do a Mac? Different softwares, and I haven't found anything I super like. So, uh, like, what, what, cast Screenify or something. Screen what, 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 what do you have? PC or Mac? Mac. Oh, really? Well, QuickTime just has a screen capture function. So if oh, you, shit, no way. yeah, so if you open that, I think it's just on file. It says record screen. Um, that'll be real easy to do. So make sure you're at least doing that. And then maybe just in the back of your mind, keep vi keep visuals for the music videos yourself. So always record the video of you doing your research online. Uh, because that will be, when, when this gets popular, people will want to know how you did it. And also, it'll build up excitement beforehand for it. And then the second thing is for your music, just keep visuals in the back of your mind. Um, and then as for the rap itself, you know, we want to move towards the album. So... The nine characters... Oh, so that's what I wanted to say before. What is, like, the big takeaway of the entire thing, you know? And then, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of like... We talked about, like, doing, like, two or three at first. Yeah. And then, like, figuring out as we go. And I realized that's not a really good way to do it because it doesn't give, like, a holistic view of what's happening. Yeah. So I moved towards trying to find a way to conceptualize of them as a group. And, yeah. like, what the fuck they're all doing with each other, in a sense. Like, even if they're not interacting directly, like, how do they... How are how is each character a commentary on the other characters? How does it help you to yeah. understand the other characters better? Okay. Um, so, that's why I came up with the, the with the thing with the, the wheel, plut chick, or whatever the fuck his name is. Oh, right. Yeah, and that's the emotion, right? That's the emotion, right? Because one of the things I've noticed about music is some of the shit that impacts me the most is yeah. super simple concept. You know, it's like... Like um, what like Pink Floyd, like wish you were here, yeah. right? Or it's just like it's that's it. That's that's what they thought of. They're like, oh, I, I wish you were here. It's a powerful fucking concept, and the rest of it is just words they tied to it. Yeah, yeah you know. And yeah. it's like, okay. so I was like, okay, like I could break this down into really base emotions, and then see like the initial story, build the initial concept for these characters off of an experience that's making them feel this, and then fill. It's like that's the bones for the moment, and then fill in the character by like what got them to that moment. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So that's why that's like that's the like the sort of vague attachment that they have to each other is in this moment, in this screen capture of them, in this like this particular iteration, they're experiencing this set of the of the of the wheel. Now that doesn't go as far as you're talking about, as far as like connecting them together. They need to they need something else. I haven't gotten quite that far yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the thing that strikes me as you know, what I'm saying is like, what's the takeaway? Is after people hear, let's just call it an album for now. After people hear your album, what what do they learn that they didn't know before? To me, something's really obvious. But I'm not sure that takeaway, I'm not sure if that's what you're going for. Like, for me, obviously, when you say, um, what was that? You said it so succinctly and concisely. It was like, the ID isn't defined by the fact that people have lots of personalities, they're defined by the fact that they don't have one unifying personality. Right, exactly. That's, that, that's a line out of a book, dude. That's straight out of the fucking book. Well, that is like the takeaway in an emotional sense, you know? Because, right. that's because, exactly it. You yeah. nailed it. Okay, is that it? Okay, good. Then like, yeah, pretty much. It's it's that plus, it's it's that, and the other thing that are, it comes to mind for me yeah. is that, um, it's people's inability to realize there's perspective other than their own. Oh, God. God, stop. Stop it. 
Yeah, <laughs> you're too good. Uh. <laughs> yes. Like, like, you're yes. You're wounding me. You, like, like, yes, dude. Like, yes. The answer is yes. Um, all right. I would try to focus on one of those. The inability of people. See, okay, because this for me is the basic takeaway. Is that really, to a certain extent, we all have DID. To a certain extent, we all have um, DID. Is like, it might not be uh, medical, but it could certainly be like philosophical. And that would be like solipsism, where like you think you're the only person who exists. Because like DID, taken to a certain extent, it's really just like, DID certain, seen in a certain way is really just the more mundane forms of sociopathy that we run into every day. You know, when someone cuts you off in line or something like that. So I would always constantly work to be reinforcing this message, you know, not in like a heavy handed way, but like you have to make it clear, make it clear that DID is a metaphor for uh, man's inhumane, inhumanity to man. It's like, that's like what you always have to do. You know, are, right. you, are you on board with that? Well, I mean, that's why the wheel was so easy for me because yeah. basically it's like Legion's the center of that wheel and those are all just the expressions of the way he feels those emotions. Okay. Right? Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. Then the, then the so that's, are... that's how they all unify together in that way. And it's like, it's, it's taken to the extreme where it's like, really, it's like normally it's just a person who feels angry. Yeah. Right? But when Legion's angry... He's this fuck, you know. In this, in that instance, he, it's the uh, anger coming from like, a, like this mom who's stuck in Tijuana and is being like, fucking no, she's yeah, in Tijuana and dealing with drug cartels. Yeah, and it's fucking like all this other stuff. But really, she's just angry, and Legion's just pissed off. Yeah. Oh. Right? Okay. So, okay. So it's but, like, yeah. So this is making me think then what I just wrote that like the listener needs to identify with Legion, like the listener needs to find themselves in Legion. So that all of these messages can be communicated to them in a clearly straightforward way. Well, that's what that's what Legion does. Is Legion's the package for all this stuff, right? Yeah. So it's like one of the characters in there, like the one that's sadness, right? I, I named him Christopher Park because I did some research into. Um, well, that's the name I came up with right now. Christopher Park is the park that was adjacent to the place where the um, the Stonewall riots started. Oh, uh, really? Oh, okay. Right? And yeah. so I was like, well, that's a really interesting thing. It's this feeling that everyone had to deal with. Because originally I was like, oh, someone who's like widowed and like thinking back 40 years to their like, to their wife. I'm like, yeah. no, what's more powerful than a gay guy thinking back to the person who died of AIDS because yeah. they were dealing in the middle of a revolution for something they believed in, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's just, that's just Legion sadness. That's just, that's just the depth. If you were to take the feeling of oh. sadness and break yeah. it open, yeah. that's the story that lives in there. But Legion's okay. just telling you how he feels sad and yeah. Those details come out in a way that's like the way you identify with Christopher Park is through the filter that is Legion, and you know yeah. he doesn't say he doesn't say specifically who he is in that moment. He doesn't say like you know like that. There, he doesn't give you enough that you get all the way to what he's talking about yeah. in that moment. Yeah. You just understand how he feels. Okay. Yeah. So now, like the challenge is saying this through rap, right? Because yeah. like when you talk about it, you yourself are incredibly like eloquent and expl explaining of it in a really clear way. So now it's just obviously, like, you can't just rap what you just told me. You have to play no. it out through the story, you know? So that's kind of where I want to head with this next. So I think this... That's right, that's why... This is a, exactly... So you just got to the exact intersection as to why I wanted to... I talked to you about yeah. this. Because it's like... Yeah, yeah. I, now you see, it's like, I can put together oh, a concept. Okay. I can't rap, right? right so it's right. like, like, we need to get all the way there. And that's why, you know, just to bring it yeah. back around... I'm not concerned about being the one that writes all the words. I can hold the vision. Yeah. I just need to help people put the pieces together and make it, you know, to make it something that people want to experience because okay. it's worth experiencing. Yeah. You just has to know that. Okay. And these emotions, wait, his wheel of emotions. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm looking at, all right. I didn't find the wheel. I found Plutchik. Okay. In 1980, Plutchik. Dude, that fucking thing is so crazy. I think, yeah. so the, there's the link. I put the link in the notes. Uh, but let me pull up. It's just a Wikipedia page. Yeah. That thing gets fucking insane. You can get to, like, you can mix the emotions. Yeah, and it's yeah. got, like, a fucking diagram that oh, folds yeah, into a yeah. dimensional shape. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Plutch I got stoked. I got real stoked when I found that thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. 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 So, does that make sense? How, it, um, how Legion is the thing. Legion is the one you identify with, but Legion's. Using a really super just... powerful story to communicate yeah. what it is you're identifying with. All right, all right, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, well, we clearly have the framework perfectly worked out as much as we need to at this point. 
So now the only important thing, well, yeah, it makes it easier said than done. It's like writing the actual rap for this, right? Um, so here, like, and I want to get us comfortable. So I know you don't have to write all the words, but if you write the words, if you write words, maybe not the words that we'll end up using, you will, that's important because it, it will make you not only a better rapper, but it will make the materials that people bring you eventually of a higher quality, you know, because when Kanye West gets ghostwriters, it's not just like they write him verses and then bring it to him, right? Or like when Dr. Dre gets ghostwriters, because I actually know because Dr. Dre has talked about just this thing. Um, oh man, I was just listening to the fucking Eminem Dre song, like I Need a Doctor. But, oh god, you should have gotten, gotten a ghostwriter. Yeah, I know, man. It's bad. See, I don't know, dude. The Ugh. thing is, I think fucking Eminem may have written those words, man. That's you know, he wrote the second half of it. You can tell. Oh. You can tell what he wrote. You can tell because it switches into Eminem's flow. Is it, is it, oh, does it? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. The oh, last really? few lines, because Dre picks up his tempo. Yeah. And he's oh, like, the okay. last few lines are oh, just like okay. totally characteristic Eminem, like, fucking punch right into the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because actually, I've, uh, without knowing, I've predicted that Eminem ghost wrote certain Dre lyrics um, and then looked up the writing credits later and found it to be right. But no, okay, yeah, because Eminem, Eminem is like a great fucking translator for Dre's um, uh, state of mind, his mindset, you know, just how he feels. And that's why I think he loves working with them. But like Dre says that like when he has ghostwriters, he'll be like here. Dude, of all fucking places, it was like Time Magazine. Um, uh, no, 2001. Um, he's like... Um, People call him, they refer to him almost as, like, a conductor. Uh, that, yeah, like, he'll come to him, oh, oh, yeah, so that's, like, how you'll function, right? You know, but he'll, um, he'll be like, oh, change this word, change this note. Um, and so after, so, even though he's not necessarily writing the raps, the fact that he has rapped makes his ghostwriters bring him better stuff, you know? For sure. Um, damn, change... Hold on. Uh, all right. I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't find it now. Uh, all the breaks and stuff. Uh, like okay. The concept, though, I mean, it's it's spot on. It's definitely what I've, I've definitely had in mind. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know, you have, to, you have to have been in the trenches to understand how to fight the war. Ah, uh, there you go. Perfect. Um, yeah, okay. Well, so what I'm thinking then is, like, yo. So, obviously, all right. Let me know if you're feeling me on this. But, like, so, obviously, the musical aspects. Okay. Here's something. So, like, each one of these characters, let's just say in a thought experiment that we wrote raps for them. My goal yeah. is for is for someone to be able to hear a rap by, let's say, Archie, yeah. and then a rap by Seamus. And even if they didn't know who rapped which or what the words are, they should be able to tell who would have rapped what. Are you down with that? Just the same, just the same way that you can tell that Eminem wrote some of Dre's yes. lyrics. Bam. Done. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. So Actually, we're online for on that. The, in that vein, yeah. Zero, the guy down at the bottom. Yeah. So this is a fucking weird-ass story. At first, I was trying to find, I'm like, how do I find some stories on the father of a terrorist is what I started it with. I was like, <laughs> I want that one. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I looked, oh, dude, I, I went deep. I fucking saw the guy who, like, I went and found the guy who converts people in England to go fight for fucking jihadists. Oh, really? Like, yeah, I, yeah. That, was, that one's dark. Which yeah. so I backed up, and I was like, well, what else can I do? And I was like, kamikaze pilots. So yeah. it's Zero because the the... the the planes that the kamikaze pilots flew from Japan in World War II were called Zeros. Right? Oh, really? Oh. So it's like this, it's this nice little play of history, but I was like, with that guy in specific, I was like, how do you do, how do you add the sensation of haiku into rap? You know, like, how do you yeah. pull in the sort of influences without making it too obvious, yeah, you know? So yeah. that was, in particular, I was like, yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah, yeah, see, okay, and that, that's actually like, you bring up a really important distinction there. Because I'm sending you this Jean Grey lyric um, where she writes a haiku. But you didn't say, how do you write haikus in rap? What you actually said was, how do you introduce the spirit of a haiku into rap? Be because she wrote a haiku, but it's not a hai It's not the spirit of a haiku. It's just like the Western gloss of it, you know? Like, oh, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, or whatever. But that's not what we're going for. And this ties into a bigger thing. And I'll get to my specific ideas. What I'm going to do is... Let me know if you're down with this. I'm going to send you a playlist of the flows that I intend to craft for each yeah. character, yeah. Right, right, in one song. Okay, so Got I'm going it. to send you a song that already exists. Say it's by, like, fucking Big V from Nappy Roots for Anger. 
and I'm going to be like, this is how I'm going to get the flow, okay? So I'm going to send you nine songs of that playlist. Is that cool? Perfect. Yeah, uh, that's perfect. I mean, honestly, it's like, yeah. it, it, it's cool because it mirrors what I've been doing with the research, where it's all these people are based off of real people. Yeah. Like, like oh, really? Oh, every cool. One of the, yeah, like, every one of these characters, like, I'm actually, I borrow pretty heavily, dude. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, you know, to be completely honest, I'm leaving sort of clues all along the way. Like, Torio is Torio Giovanni. He was like, oh. he was a big fucking gangster in like Chicago. Yeah. Who was fucking responsible for um, Al Capone. He was oh, like the okay. guy who fucking brought up Al Capone. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, oh, really? Oh, okay, yeah. And I can't underline enough what a good idea this is. Like, have you ever watched House of Cards? Haven't, but I should, right? Should uh, well, I, get, I should go watch it. Yeah, yeah, no. Just because, like, dude, every episode of that fucking show is just like. I feel like it's what happened that day in that year made into a story. Like, I'm sorry, the Underwoods are just like Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Like, Viktor Petrov, the president of Russia, is just fucking Vladimir Putin. Dude, they brought Pussy Riot into the show and had Pussy Riot played Pussy Riot. That should, t I mean, you know, like, that should tell you how close the show hues to reality. Like, it's just like, it's basically just a rewrite of, um, real life. So that's a really good idea. But, like, the spirit, let me jump back real quick, um, because I think a guiding artistic ideal, if you want to say, in all of this should be, um, I don't know how to say it besides, um, you shouldn't do what Breaking Bad did. Have you watched Breaking Bad? Not much. Okay. Well, what Breaking episodes. Bad did is basically create the most fucking dramatic situation of all time. All right. Let me list the things that are wrong. Um, the family is broke. Uh, he has cancer. Um, she is an, she cheats on him. Uh, she's pregnant. I, I get where you're going with this. I the, get where you're going with this. Son, dude, their son has cerebral palsy. Uh, he, <laughs> like, yeah. Now you're just bludgeoning, you're bludgeoning the dad, this dead son at this point. It, exactly, like, like, he got cheated out of a fortune. And dude, it's like, all of that happens in the first episode, dude. All of that is, like, set up, not the right. first episode, but, like, by the end of the first season, all of those things are in work. So, and I think you're on the same page when you're talking about the spirit of the haiku, but, like, the reason this works shouldn't be because it's dramatic. It should be because it's subtle. And that will, yeah, yeah, and that will make the, I don't know, the unity of the project, I guess, come to the fore much more. Um, so let's go, why don't we, I'm trying to pick up, because there's a few things, right? So I'm going to send you that playlist of um, um, the songs, the character songs, the character flows. But it is also preeminently important to me that, well, no, that's the wrong way to say that. An essential musical part of this album will be conversation, right? I mean, like, the, the personalities are going to talk to each other, right? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. They can talk to each other. Yeah, they can talk to each other. So like, um, I, yeah, you can you can have it do it. It's a little bit of it's a little bit of a break from like super conventional DID, but there are personalities that are aware of each other. Usually, the main one in this case, it's like part of the part of the thing we have to sort of figure out if we want to do is is figure out if Legion is a is an identity of me. Or if Legion is in fact the, the like what's called the host identity, yeah, because it's not common that the host identity is aware of the other identities. It's usually one of the other identities that's aware of the rest of them, and then some uh, of them aren't aware of all of them. Okay, well, okay, well, here, let's do this then. Like in like a, how are you planning on these stories unfolding? You know. Well, I think that the stories should unfold in a way that's abstract, right? So yeah. like um. Well, that's, that's, that's why I wanted conversation, you know, because it's hard for them to unfold in an abstract way if it's all first person, because, like... Sure, yeah. Yeah, you know, because it's hard to skip around time when you're just first person. It's hard to, like, have thoughts when you're only... I mean, it's a big problem in translating books into movies, right? Because in movies, it's a lot harder to display a character's inner thoughts... So they have to do awkward things like introduce characters who weren't in the book and shit like that. So like, how are you, If I agree that it needs to be abstract, but if they're not going to have conversations, how did you want it to be abstract? Well, I mean, 
it, the individual characters don't depend on interacting with each other. Like they are yeah, fully, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. fully complete individuals with a whole cast of characters around oh. them that you don't really need to like that you don't necessarily need to meet because really what you're doing like a song from each one of them is just kind of like this is where I'm at right now. This is what I'm dealing with. This is the like you know I'm not saying like this is the the stuff they're saying under the surface. Like here's the core emotion. Like Seamus, right? So Seamus. Yeah. Seamus is like a fucking, like I said, he's like this child of the Civil War. Yeah. He feels cheated out of his fucking history. Yeah. He's pissed off. He just found out that he has AIDS. And so he's this guy who, like, which is actually a true thing. I went and researched, like, there's a huge AIDS epidemic in the South. Really? So this is like, yeah, it's fucking a big thing. There's a big thing of AIDS in the South. Because, yeah. like, oh, this is a line. This is a line right here. Fucking, um. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, I don't have to actually do this one directly, but I just, like, it's it was so in there, right? So Seamus was the first one that I fucking was like, all right, how far how far do I have to go? I watched a whole bunch of videos on the KKK. Yeah. I fucking, like, I just started, like, researching some, yeah, some yeah. deep and dark shit. Oh, do you, know what the, do you know what the numbers 1483 mean? No. Oh, fuck, this one's awful. So 1483, is, there's a tattoo. I watched this KKK video, and this guy yeah. had a tattoo of 1483 on his neck. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is that? It stands for the 14 words in this sentence, which is, we must secure the existence of our people and the future for white children. And the second part refers to Hail, Heil Christ, which is, they borrowed from Heil Hitler. It's some fucking deep, dark wait, shit, wait, right? Wait, wait, so how does, line, it, was, yeah, how does 83 what? refer to Heil Christ? It's the line in a book somewhere. Oh, like I okay. can go back and pull it up. I didn't, but it's like it's the it's the certain part of like a certain part of like a book or yeah. one of the things that one of the things they reference. But um, let's see. Where was the thing? Uh, maybe I won't be able to find it. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, okay. He says something about he says that like AIDS is a poor man's disease. Yeah. And I was just like, oh fuck. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'm gonna turn it up. Okay, like because this is my um. Yeah, I don't so know. Like, I think you just need con. I just think the ability of these identities to talk to someone. I guess it doesn't have to be another identity, but like. So check this out. So what yeah. I was just thinking about the reason why I was like, "Oh God," is in theory, if we did it subtly enough, the entire thing could be in the context of a therapy session. Yeah. Right. So it's like. Year, or like a series, it's like a documentary of a series of like visits to the therapist. Yeah. Without making it too obvious that that's what's going on. Yeah. That's true. Feels a little bit forced because it's too close. Like I don't, I think it's yeah, too close. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was thinking. And honestly, like the Sopranos kind of did the therapy thing. And oh like, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to not go for like a Saint Elmo twist. You know, like did you ever watch that show where it turns out like they're all dead? The St. Elmo twist is basically just like they're all dead at the end of like any yeah. a, any fucking thing, you know? So like it's like basically what people thought how Lost was going to end. Maybe how Lost should have ended. But like that's a little – yeah, that's a little like forcing it because it's just like – look, I need – then think about that then. Is I need – to be able to create these flows and to tell the story in an abstract way, I need there to be two sources of dialogue. And it doesn't really matter what the dialogue – the two sources of dialogue is – but, like, that will make it so much easier and give just me, from a musical standpoint, so much more to play with. Because it would, like, this whole project itself could be a commentary on musical dialogue. I mean, like, there are whole musical genres defined by um, musical dialogue, where instruments talk back and forth between each other, you know? I mean, there's this oh, musical Christ. texture called A Call and Response. Where yeah, no, it's super classic. It's yeah. like in all the fucking classical shit. Yeah, it's exactly. Like the, and, the and first it's like, violins, the second violins. Yeah, yeah, and it's a uh, fucking like, um, I mean, uh, even in rap, you know, what's the fucking Lord have mercy? Here's a little story that must be told. Well, if from Wild Style, like that's one of the most famous routines of all time is um, uh, the back and forth between those two dudes sitting on the stoop. No, dude, Wild Style the film. Odd style film. Um, and they all recreate it. Oh, God. Didn't we talk about Waiting for Godot, too, last time? Maybe you brought that up last time as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that would have been, like, like, you, um, like, that's a good, that's a good example of how I, of how I imagine multiple characters functioning. Because as great as Waiting for Godot is, it couldn't be, 
um, done with, like, just one character, right? Because it's a play, and you can't see their thoughts. Like, you need, they needed that other character to have the conversation. So if you notice in Waiting for Gato, when they talk to each other, oftentimes they don't even respond to what the other person just said. It's fucking creepy as fuck. Like, one guy could be like, oh, yeah. the, uh, one guy could be like, oh, I'm so hungry. And then the other guy's like, you know what I saw on TV last week? And the other guy's like, I wonder if my girlfriend is coming to pick me up. And then the next guy is like, oh, the moon's out. It's just, like, so creepy, you know? And that's, Wait, yeah. what if, what if all right, so, you know, stop me if I'm going wrong. What if the actual, like, what if you use a similar thing, a similar concept across songs, and they're talking to each other, but on a one-sided side of conversation? And in specific points, right? So you'd have, like, so it's like you have Seamus kind of ranting, and then he responds to a line from um, this, like, Mexican woman's song, right? And then he, yeah. like, sort of, he, like, he basically, without speaking directly to her, like, hears that thing and, like, fucking gets upset about it. Oh, okay. You know, like, see what you're saying? Like, so yeah. it's like you have nine conversations, and they all interact, but you only hear one of each one at a time. Yeah. And you don't necessarily know what they're responding to. Yeah. Right? So it's like, you have to be like, basically you have to draw a map for this fucking well, thing. Well, well like, that's what I mean. That's what I'm trying to do in my mind. Like, what I'm trying to do in my mind is draw a map for how these structures will function. Like, and that's just me thinking in musical terms. Because, like, I suppose I could do, like, the rap when I write the rap. I suppose I could structure, and this would, a lot of it would be, like, how we mix it. You know, how it appears in the stereo world. Whether it's the left pan or the right pan or the middle pan how loud it is, how close it is to you. But I suppose I could do it all like internal monologue. I guess I could. I guess I could. I mean, I think I think it's a self-referencing internal monologue. It's yeah. like if you were to have a whole bunch of thought, thought processes, right? So imagine, imagine if we thought in a linear fashion, and so we think through this feeling of anger, and then you're thinking through this feeling of sadness, but you remember something you thought about with anger, and so yeah. you're like, oh... And then you sort of reflect on how you felt about anger, but from sadness. Yeah. Right? So you see how they, like, they sort of, like, they move, they, they um, traverse yeah, over yeah, across each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why I'm so interested in this is I'm trying to keep it from being a story like, this happened, and then this happened, and then no, no, that happened. No, you can't happened. say what's going on. Like, it's yeah. more, it's the impetus for what drives their rant, essentially. Okay. Right? So you're just sitting there, and it's like, because you don't, I'm not going to sit here and be like, Oh, by the way, yeah. fucking Martin, I just thought of this thing, and it makes me feel this way. It's more that's like, true, that's I true. just triggered okay. by this thing that happens, yeah. and I'm like, fuck, you know, I hate it when people bitch about sick, and I just, like, go yeah. off on, like, yeah. something that's close, but not quite, you know, and yeah. it's like, I'm just going to rant. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm looking for, okay, 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 okay. You so, can reel me back in, see, you can reel me back in. Yeah, no, 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 I like that. It's just that you have solved the literary problem. Like, you saw, oh, well, 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 like, I'm saying, like, the, the, our literary problem, our literature problem, our poetry problem, but, like, I'm trying to solve the musical problem of, like, oh, yeah. because they're different, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to imagine what this poetic story that you have really well mapped out looks like in musical terms. Um, okay. Because... I'm useless to you. Well, well, well... well it, well, I just, <laughs> I'm admitting that. It, well, no, well, like, not really, because I just need you to adapt and work with me on the poetic side of it to the musical side of it, right? Okay. Because, like, um, I need, like, I just need material I can work with. You know, like, you know how, like, Beethoven made that whole symphony, dun 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 dun. Like, he made that whole symphony out of those four notes. Like, I'm looking for those four notes in the music. Because I can't, oh, shit. like, I don't want to just make a rap album. Because that will not be doing your idea justice. Like, I need, a, what is the action? What is the action? What is the action of this album? Like, what actually happens on this album? Like, physical actions that take place. I'm, I'm not talking about, like, emotional development or the relationship of the characters. And it's fine if you don't have an answer to that. Like, because, uh, like, no. because, like, what is, you know, what's Marcel Proust's fucking famous book, Forgotten Time, or whatever? But, like, you know, there's no... Because there are works of art that don't have action to them that everyone loves. I mean, yeah, like, Waiting for Gatto was it. But, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it does not seem like on this album, like, there's a climax that consists of an action. Do, do you see the distinction I'm trying to draw? Like, Batman 2 ends when... Um, Two Face gets killed, right? But to me, on this album, 
we have to decide pretty decisively that that is not true for this album, right? I mean, I, I just feel like there's too much depth to the individual characters to try and cover too much ground with them in a single album. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like you said. It's. I mean, it's like it's kind of like an epic. I mean, it's like if you stop thinking about things in albums and you start thinking about things in storylines, it's like what we're really trying to do is we're trying to create. It's kind of like it's sort of like um like a really fucking emotionally intense version of real world that goes on for a really okay. fucking long time. Okay. Okay. So like okay. Okay. Good. All right. right so you're, but what makes what makes that attractive is like you're wrapped up in the story. You're right. Yeah. You, it's like. And you don't, it's not like there's one climactic moment. It's like life. There's a series of shit. Like every time, I, no, this is a fucking thing I deal with. I feel like there's always something I'm anxious about coming down the road. You yeah. know, it's like, and it's happening, I'm going, and I'm like, it's here. And then I'm right on to the next thing. Yeah, even though yeah. I'm like, fuck, I always do this to myself. I, I always have that. that thing. And then it comes, and yeah. I like set up another one, and I've got it. You know? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. Well, this is like, you need, all right. Then this one is, um, okay, cool. All right, cool. That, that's enough of an answer to work with. Then, like, all right, I'm going to propose something. I don't know. Like, I'll just... Because I guess I kept thinking that in order to make... See, okay, because this was my thing, right? Was when you have one rapper rapping on any normal song. Like, let's just look at um, Notorious B.I.G.'s uh, one song. Uh, and, let, like, I'm, let me... Um, what? What is it called? Demonstrate the difference to you. 40 second commercial? Come on, man. I had an album due to shit. release, and I wanted to be able to... Alright, alright. So he's got this story, right? Um, this song. And it's a pretty straightforward story. And he's rapping in this way that I don't want to rap. It's pretty much my, um, my thing. Because he just tells a story. And, and like the climax of the story is that he steals the drugs... From the people that he was supposed to... Oh, yeah. To. Yeah. No, fuck no. Yeah, yeah, see, right? But, like, this is what I'm saying. When you rap like this, it is really hard to rap in any other way. Like, when you, when all you're doing is rapping in a first person on a song with a beat, it's hard not to get wrapped up in actions. And even the most, like, internal... Because what do people love about fucking, what, Ulysses, like, by James Joyce? is that it's basically like an internal monologue. Or um, that guy's The Sound and the Fury. You know, they're internal monologues, they're thoughts. But this type of rap is really unfriendly to internal monologues. Because it's not clear that it's an internal monologue because you're talking. So whenever you hear someone talk, it is not an internal monologue. So when you hear someone talk in the form of a rap, the amount of emotion that they're allowed to explore is really restricted by just by logical necessity. So the reason I wanted to bring in conversation... Said. Yeah, yeah, thank you. The reason I wanted to bring in conversation was because it would allow this internal monologue to be more apparent. But I yeah. guess... I guess... No, no. No, no, I think you can have it. I think you can have it. I mean, like, I, I don't... I'll do a little bit more research and look into it as far as the idea. Yeah. But, like, I could, see, I could see what you're saying, like, a little bit of panning. And, you know, and it's just like a, like another question of, like, you're going down a thought process and you go, well, what if it's this other way? And that's yeah. actually a different character being, like, you know, it's and that kind of drives their thought process. Like, Seamus is a great example of that, right? He's yeah. pissed off, he's pissed off, he got AIDS, it sucks, and then he's, like, in his mind, he's going, well, wait, what if it's, you know, like, he's thinking it's, oh, God's fucking smiting me, or he's like, well, maybe, maybe it's not that complicated, you know? And so yeah. that's actually, that could be the voice of someone else, you know, that's the voice of Zero kind yeah. of popping in and being, like, uh, maybe there's a reason for this. And okay. he goes, oh, and he, yeah. then it takes him, it can help him progress. You know, all something right, like all that. Right. Like, all right, I think, okay, because one, one way we can solve this is by actually setting up the workflow of the album in a really specific way. So I would not, again, I would not suggest this for anyone to do. But I think what should happen is you should write a, a third-person account of the album, of the project, of a, of a large portion of the is. project. Because I don't want to call it an album. When I say album, I really just mean short Project. Name. Yeah. That's why it's called The Legion Project. There you go. Yeah. Um, then I'm going to take your third-person account, and I'm going to translate it into rap. And I'm going to do it without... Uh, and obviously with your input. But I'm going to do it without a beat. And then we'll get someone to add the beat on at the end. Like, that is the only way I can think of that 
the translation of these characters' thoughts will have the requisite freedom to be able to externalize an internal monologue. Like, that's really the challenge here, right? It's how to externalize an internal monologue in a form of rap, in, in a form of talking that is inherently extroverted. It's really the challenge to overcome. Uh, so what do you think of that plan? Hang on, let me, let me take on a second. Yeah. It sounds good. I'm like, honestly, it's like for some reason, more so than anything, that's just sort of realized, big help me realize how daunting this fucking thing is. Yeah. Just like, because I'm just, like, as you're saying, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, third person, yeah, I can do that. It's basically, that's basically what Legion does. You know, yeah. like, because what I was, what I was conceptualizing, I was like, Legion sort of helps. Legion's kind of doing what, doing for the characters what you're doing for me, right? He's taking these stories. Yeah. And he's giving them, he's making them poetry. Okay. Right, because it's like no, yeah. no one wants to hear someone just fucking you know bitch and moan, and so. But he's like, the Legion's basically like, he's just these just some of the people need to hear, and so like I'll make this worth hearing, right? And so that's yeah. kind of what he does. So it's like, all right, so now I have to figure out a way to have the third person experience of Legion picking up these different stories, and I think they really do. I think they have to interact a lot, and so now what I'm trying to think of is like, if they were all in a room. How much conversation would they have to have? Like, how how much could we just lightly interconnect them so that they could get on their tangent a little bit? Yeah, and that's what I wanted. Okay, that's perfect, because that's what I was heading for initially. Because what, like, if I gave you, you know, quote-unquote homework, what it would do would be to just write, like, 16 bars of rap where you include four different voices. And then I would send you a playlist of different types of musical conversations in rap. So I think even if that was your starting point, it would be a whole lot easier to start the actual writing process afterwards. Because like you need to understand how the characters relate to each other, but how can we do that if the characters don't talk to each other, you know? So maybe it's just Legion who is in everyone's story. And like maybe I could do I mean, you know, it doesn't all have to be internal monologues. Like maybe Seamus talks to the cashier at the local gas station for, like, two sentences. But those two sentences are really revealing, you know, or something like that. Um, but, like, I'm just... I'm, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find a way to make wow. their, their, their thought processes, like, in the third world where the listen Not the third world. The third person where the listener can hear them, you know? Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually, because, like, you know, Seamus is a great example because, like, he's kind of this racist bigot, right? Or at least yeah. he is right now. And it's, like, so, you know, one of the things I find so interesting about people from the South all the time or, you know, anybody who's, like, an abuser or, yeah. or who's, like, racist is they can be so polite, right? But then go so home just, and be, like, those damn N-words. Yeah. Yeah, right. So I'm just picturing him, like, at the cashier, like, oh, well, no, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Turn around and be like, fuck this guy. Yeah, you know, just yeah, like, yeah. You know, going from, like, just, like, I'm so civil, and yes, I understand. Yeah. Thank y'all, thank y'all. And then just fucking unleash, you yeah, know, and it's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, my thing is, like, I just want to get to writing the story, really, I think is the next step. Um, Sorry, okay. Like, the actual thing that happens. But, like, we need a vehicle in which that can happen, and that's the vehicle I'm looking for, you know? So, like, maybe it's just the first song, but, like, before we meet next time, we need pen to paper... Well, specifically you, so then I know which way to take the rap. Um, what, no, then I know what kind of rap I can write is, I don't know, like, what's the opening line? Like, don't put too many restrictions on yourself for what it is, you know? Don't have to think that it has to be great. Don't have to think that it has to be first person, second person, third person, singular, plural. But, like, when you throw all this stuff into a pot, what actually comes out? And a way I was trying to bridge the gap between rap and... Uh, is just by having you write an account of it, of, like, a third person, or even just, like, Legion starting off. Just, like, write it in a story form. Write the action in a story form is really what I need. And then I'll know what to work with. Or even if you wanted to do, like, a circular story form where all of these things are happening at the same time, and, like, we do, like, some goddamn... I mean, yeah, Chris Nolan, you know, how he switches back and forth between scenes so much in, like, a deliberately paced montage because it's not quite a yeah, the other one the other one that i was pulling out i was like how do i pull in some of the cloud atlas sensation into this yeah you know, like that was another thing that i was just like man that fits really well here where you've just got like these 
corresponding timelines. We can't even fucking tell exactly what yeah. the characters are and which one, but they all make together. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, well, see, but like we need something that allows that to happen because, like, how do they get from one point in time to the next in Cloud Atlas? I mean, that one's it's like what are they doing? They're they're switch. The thing about the thing that in Cloud Atlas is that the characters are all the same. The time zones are what's different, right? Yeah. So they're switching back between like the same characters in different lifetimes at different points in history. But, so like you see, okay, some of them are some of them are a big deal in some story. Have you seen that movie? No. Oh fuck. Is it good? Uh, I mean, it's a really it goes both ways. Some people really, like you either really love it or you really don't like really? it. Really? Yeah, but, um, yeah, that's what I heard. I fucking love it. Oh really? Right? Like I just like oh like I mean you watch that and you see this thing yeah. spelled out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, okay, well, here's, like, here's... Okay, well, here, I'll finish, I'll finish taking it all the way. It's basically... Yeah. Uh, basically, what, what that allows for it to do is the way they correlate. It's like, because, like, a person can, a person can be represented in someone else's story by someone other than who that person is, yeah. right? Like, like, I have a dream, and you're in my dream, but you represent something. It's not you that I'm dreaming about necessarily, but you represent something. So it's like that, but flipped inside out, yeah. right? Where it's like, something yeah. is my dream that represents you. Okay, so in in Cloud Atlas, and again, I haven't seen it, so correct me if I'm wrong. What are the similarities between the six different eras then? I mean, the eras themselves... It's it's really what the it's really what those eras do to the storylines, right? Because it's yeah. like you have a revolving. Like, oh, you gotta watch that fucking movie, man. Well, well you yeah, yeah, clearly. Cast of characters. Well, well, that's what, what I'm saying, that? though. But like, okay, so it sounds like, what is it that ties everything together, though, in Cloud Atlas? Is it the eras? Are the eras all uniform to each other? Are they all similar to each other? No, they're all. They're, you've got everything from like, like, uh, fucking 1800s to like 2000. I'm not kidding. No, no, sorry, like okay. 3,000. Okay, 3, well, like, well, what ties the movie together, then? It's, I mean, I'll, 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 you can watch it, I'll back up on it, see what I can do about it. I, yeah, we'll see. okay, well, it's, I'm just saying. It's too, it's too, you won't get the movie the first time you watch it, so it's too hard to fucking put together yeah. for you. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, well, what about, like, we need, like, I'm just saying we need that thing that ties it all together, yo. And yeah, to me, I, I it, gotcha. it just seems like it's Legion, because Legion is already there. So, like, you can, yeah. like, I love, you know, like, you can say the same thing. Like, we're thinking on the same patterns. It's just... Got it. Like, but, like, say, and again, I'm just spitballing as an example of what we need. Okay, so you have nine characters, right? Yeah. Say that all nine characters face the similar problem. Say they all lose something. Well, that is what ties it all together. How they all react to their loss. Like, and we need a way for them to not necessarily talk to each other, but for their different reactions. It's already in there, actually. It's already built in there, exactly what you're saying. Who? Like, so, fucking, what's his name? Archie lost his freedom. Yeah. Seamus is also losing his freedom, but in a different way. He's also losing his health. Fucking, um, uh, Zero is going to lose his life, but he's facing that honorably. Yeah. Fucking, um... Who else? Like, who else do I have in there? Really quick. I it, like. You're, you're, it's a great idea. Um, there are, but it's interesting that it's already in there. It's, it's yeah. already already in there. And one of the things, um, Clara, the Clara's the most recent one. I'm not so sure about her, but um, you know, essentially she's losing her youth. She yeah. the potential of using losing her like her youth to a life that she hasn't really put together. Yeah. Christopher actually already lost it. It's past lost. It's post lost. He lost his. He lost his love. The dealing with the like the past sensation yeah. of that. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know, it's it's an, that's a great idea. I'll I'll, fucking, well, I'll stay with that yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, but because, I, I hear you. Yeah. Like it occurs to me. Well, the thing that ties Cloud Atlas together, you know, it's like a substitution, right? In most okay. stories, we think of the characters as being the most important thing, but that's not what how Cloud Atlas works. The most important part of Cloud Atlas seems to be the dynamic relationship between events. So it's like, yes. you, yeah, you need something to tie it together, though, and that's what I'm looking for. So, like, what, uh, I would say, what vehicle ties the stories, uh, the stories together, and how can we externalize an internal monologue if the characters never talk to each other? Th these are, like... No a, big deal. Yeah, well, yeah, right? Like, like, <laughs> it, like as, I'm, as I'm imagining 
how we overcome the internal monologue, it strikes me not necessarily that it'll be difficult. It'll just be something that no one, no one has ever done before because they don't have the right context for it. They don't, you know, when, when, you know, when Tupac, yeah, just when every rapper goes into a studio booth, they're basically told more or less subconsciously and subliminally to talk to people. They're never really, they never really receive strong indications to talk to themselves while other people are listening. And that's what we need to do. And I guess rap can be adapted to that. It's just that it's never been done before. But nothing about it strikes me as being impossible. You just need an extremely specific artistic context in which you can do it. And I think that's what this album is. So honestly, it seems like maybe just leave that problem to me, that second one, and I can figure it out. But it's just like, then I need to know what those characters are saying. You know, like what actually happens. I mean, the, I, I feel like, you know, just to take one more step out of the yeah. obvious answer, as you already said, is it's Legion, right? And so yeah. it's like, if Legion was actually a person in the lives of each one of these people, in a way, yeah. you know, it's like that, that means that he's sort of like a time traveler a little bit, but that's not really the point of him. It's like, it's Legion's perspective of these situations. And basically what these are, are conversations, it's like a conversation with a good friend, you know? And it's like, yeah. Legion's that kind of person that everyone can talk to. It doesn't matter. He's a friend with the gangsters. He's friends yeah, with, yeah. like, the yeah. Catholics. He's friends with all types of people. And so it's like, the, and he's mostly just listening, you know? But it's like, it's a moment okay. of, like, okay. him being like, so, like, you know, like, what's going on? It's like, oh, I'm fucking dealing with this, I'm this. And it's like, oh, that sounds hard. Like, what's, you know, tell me more about this. I know, right? It's, and, you know, so he's, yeah. it's this little discourse between Legion and all these people from different periods. I mean, that would be, uh, that's the first one my mind okay. goes to. Okay. Okay. And don't, you know, don't stick on it, but I'll, I'll, like I said, you got a good point. I think it's a little, you know, it's, it's sort of, we both got to look at it. And yeah. Like I said, I don't have the answer yet, so. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 I'm just trying to come up with a really specific next step that both of us can take that will get us there. And I think one thing is, yeah, I don't know. I'm more confident. I'm, I'm, a, well, I'm a lot more confident about overcoming these challenges than I was when we started, which is good. Because I didn't, well, just I didn't recognize what the challenges were before. I think. Neither did I. Yeah, but now... <laughs> like, what did, I get, what did we get ourselves into here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. No, no, but, like, even if we got one song of this done, man, it is, you know, like a six-minute track. It'll be dope. I just, I need, I would need someone to put the beat over it because when I'm through with this, I'm going to be so fucking tired of thinking about it, I'm not going to want to touch the beat, dude, because the beat just has to be, like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, who do you think about getting... I mean, like, you're not going to do the beat, are you? Or do you want to do the beat? I, I don't think so. I couldn't. Yeah, that's, I that's, and that's what I mean. And that's the thing is, it's like, I think that's what makes this concept even more incredible is it's yeah. like, it's pull, like, once we've got a good grasp on it, because, like, you know, yeah. like, you're a victim to this idea first, you're the first victim. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, and then, like, once we have a grasp on it, and like you're saying, we can sort of weave somebody else in, and like, someone comes at it from like, oh, I get the idea now. We've, like, we've been able to communicate really well. Beat guy's like, yeah, I think I get it. And he asks, if he asks questions as good as you're asking, like, yeah. we find people who understand their craft that well. Yeah. They bring that part to it, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's so it's like, true. Don't... Yeah, well, I'll think about who else to get, but then I wanted to, um, what about, um, the thing is, um, okay, so which one of these nine characters do you feel you have mapped out the most? So the ones that, the one that I've done the most homework on is Seamus. Oh, I okay. also like Seamus Lee because it's shamelessly. I like, I like that. Uh, 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 uh. Working on it. Um, and so he's the one I've done the most homework on. Um, Zero, oddly enough, feels like the one that's the most easy for me to relate to. Okay. Okay, so when I'm going to ask you to write a 1,000-word story about either of those characters. Which one do you want to do? Fuck, I think it's going to have to be Seamus. Okay, then that's what I would do, is write a 1,000-word story, at least. That, that's not a limit. About Got it. the moment when Seamus learned he has AIDS. Great. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, there's, you know, there's some varieties. It's basically, it's like a life-altering thing yeah. that comes out. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to make this as digestible, digestible for you as possible. So would you rather write about the moment he had AIDS or the first, he learned he had AIDS or the first time he used the N-word? Uh -oh. the, the first time he heard the N-word used by his I mean, me by his mentor, I don't know, man. Just something with, not that he learned that he had AIDS. Yeah, that's, I actually kind of want that to be mostly like a side point almost. Like okay. that's like, 
that's context. Uh, okay, you know, that's the moment like, when he met his mentor in racism. That's what I'm gonna say then. Yeah, oh, no, I can do that. No, no, he found out. He his mentor in racism. His mentor in racism became his mentor in racism because presumably he met him first, you know, and whether it was his dad or not, like, let's say that, you know, so let's say it's like the first time he heard his dad go on a rant, a racist rant, or like the first time his, I don't know, his fucking basketball teacher in high school hung out with him after the restaurant and made fun of all the black cooks in the kitchen or whatever, you know, just like a really specific moment though. Like, I don't want you to write the whole fucking book on Seamus yet. I want you to really do a deep dive on a single important moment in the character and that will help you do the whole story. So basically, it's it's as if you're Legion and you're asking Seamus when, you know, when did you where, like when was the moment when you kind of got on that path? Yeah, yeah. When did he become who he is now? I mean, because that's really kind of what all these stories are going to revolve around. You know, it's like when uh, what's that guy's name? Zero. Like when Zero saw his father commit sepulchre because like his wife slept with another man or something or whatever rough life <laughs> well, 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 well yeah i mean none of these dudes are really coming out on top although who's the uh Ar- archie no he's a term he's like no yeah yikes the one guy there's two there's two that i had to throw in some that have a little bit of like oomph to them yeah. and that's torio who's got a lot of attitude but also has a sad story and actually again the last one clara because i was just last night i was like i had something else in there like it was gonna be a child of some sort and i was yeah. like no, I need something that's a, they got a little more balls to it. And yeah. I, so I started looking up I started looking up sex trafficking and then I actually ended up on this fucking website of all these girls that are like like they seem stoked on being prostitutes. And I was like Really? Okay. Oh fuck yeah. It was like back page or something. Really? It might Jesus. still be up here. What the fuck was it even called? Uh, uh, yeah, it's just like it's just like like page after page yeah. after page of girls being like, I'm expensive. I like being expensive. You know, no yeah. drama, no boss, you just call me up. And I'm just like that's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, you're so you're on board for that homework, though, right? Yeah, homework. I got the I got the idea. You know, I'll sit down and, and kind of dig into his brain. I can totally, I can totally get back there. So basically, I'm gonna be writing from Seamus's perspective as he tells, as he speaks to like kind of like how he got on his road, and he's speaking to that from a position of realizing that now he has, he's got AIDS, which yeah. he got from. Which he got from a prostitute, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And this is, you know, I'm trying to add a little bit more. Like he's got a lot of shit stacked up to, against him. Not quite as much as fucking Breaking Bad guy. Yeah. But yeah. But basically, uh, yeah, it's yeah. enough that it's it's breaking his racism at this point. Like it's breaking oh, his okay. re- like relationship to it because yeah. he's just seen that like life can fucking suck and there isn't a need for me to be this bad. But he's not quite there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, that's true. Just the cracks are showing. Oh, okay. And that's, um, that's Seamus, right? Yeah, that's Seamus. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. I think that would be a really good place. Because if you come back with that, then what I'll do next is translate in, into rap. You, 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 okay. see, you see where I'm going with this? So you, so you write the story, then I look at the story, and then I abstract it into something that can go into music. And then that'll be the departure point. Okay. All that's right. great. Nice guidance. Good way to, way to like pull that out there. Well, 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 yeah, yeah. That's what. That's just. I think that's the easiest way to do it because me translating you will take advantage of both of our strengths on this project. I feel like. For sure. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, so, no, so, you, uh, yeah. Did you want to put together? Do you want to put together a playlist before or after I get that to you? I'm just curious. Um, you don't think about it, I guess. Uh, of the old, uh, I could. Um, let me. Um, I, I like music, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why, why don't I do that real quick then? Let me hit you up with an email. I'll, I'll just do that right now. Emotion. Damn. Here, could you send me a list of the nine emotions? Actually, just text it to me right here. I mean, sure. Yeah. Got a lot of shit done there. Yeah. And there's only there's eight of them. Okay. 
Legion's the ninth character, so. Okay, true. We can make a Oh, and you record this? Can I get a copy of that so I can make notes? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. There's too much I, good shit that I gotta yeah, go back and, like, Yeah, apart. absolutely. That, that's why I was doing this anyway. Um. Yeah, I mean, there was just, that was just packed. I was like, I should take notes. I'm like, fuck it, I can't. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, that's straight. Disgust. I mean... Dude, that Kanye track, Through the Wire? Yeah, you like that? That's my jam. I, I know, like isn't that shit hot? Me. Yeah. It's so dope. I also, I really do love this shit where he's just like, I, I apologize if you can't understand whatever. I got my, 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 my mouth's wired yeah, shut. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just like, yeah. He's just like rambling for a second. I'm like, that's so dope. Yeah, isn't, <laughs> that, isn't that badass? Yeah, uh, we're done Kanye track. All right. Coming, coming up with one for surprise might be... Yeah, there's more Kanye on this, too, actually. Um, uh, hold on. Wiki, the documentary. Um, uh, yeah, there's more Kanye on this. It's a song called We Can Make It Better. Lupe's on there, I think. Talib Kweli. Uh, another Sorry. guy from College Dropout. What's the one? Anticipation. All right, I got Anger. Discuss. Anger. Anger. That's got to be an easy one. Well, yeah. Well, I, I'm between. You know the song Kim by Eminem. That's, oh fuck. That that's yeah. got to be. I hey, guess you, that's got to be. Anger. You know what to do right now. You sit on him. I'm not saying you got to get that to me right now. I'm just. I'm curious. I'll yeah. go ahead and do my homework. I'll let you go. Um. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Work, w w work with these. This is basically the whole list. Um. So joy. So I listen to the emotion, then the artist, then their song. So, Fear has two, because that, for me, that's some of my favorite rap. Anticipation, Joy by Talib Kweli, that's about his child being born. And it starts with when he found out that his wife's water broke, or she was going into labor or whatever. So, obviously, Anticipation is really easy in there. Um, Optimism, Welcome Back, that's when Mace came back out of retirement. So, that's optimistic, because he's coming back out of retirement, and he thinks that he'll be back on top of the game again, you know? Uh, we can make it better. It's just, it's kind of them celebrating their life, even though, you know, the title of this song is We Can Make It Better, but the message of the song is really that things are already really good, and that, and if you recognize that things are already really good, it's a lot easier to actually make things better, um, if you're optimistic. Uh, but yeah, and you'll have to hear the songs. Discuss, I'll come up with Disgust. Um, yeah, Kim is, Kim is by Eminem. Uh, and, and yeah, that should be a good list to get you started. All right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so, so after you write that story and have gone through the playlist, just let me know, and um, we'll take a look at the story together. All right. Sounds great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Martin. All great right. With you. Yeah. This was awesome, man. Thank you so much. I get so much out of this. Like, at, at a lot of times, you know, well, in most of my other lessons, you know, I'm like teaching people, but like in this one, I feel like I'm learning, man. I feel like I'm learning. Um, cool. So yeah, yeah, can't wait for the next one. All right, just hit me up. All right, we'll do. All right, Sign peace, my friend. Have a good one.